Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we're diving into a topic more confusing than trying to explain NFTs to your grandparents, cybersecurity. And no, it's not just about wearing a tinfoil hat and changing your password to password 123, though honestly at this point, even that might be an improvement for some of you. We're talking about the real deal here, folks, the kind of stuff that keeps CEOs awake at night, sweating more than a politician under oath because in the wake of, well, everything from the CrowdStrike incident to, let's face it, just existing online these days, cybersecurity has gone from a niche concern to a headline-grabbing, economy-shaking issue. And yet, despite all this, there's still a shocking amount of misinformation swirling around out there. It's like everyone's getting their cybersecurity advice from a magic eight ball vague, unreliable, and likely to leave you feeling more confused than before. So buckle up, buttercups, because in this video, we're busting some of the most pervasive cybersecurity myths out there. We'll separate fact from fiction, reality from wishful thinking, and hopefully give you the knowledge you need to navigate the digital world without ending up as a cautionary tale on the evening news. Stay tuned. Ah, the classic cybersecurity myth. Cyber attacks, those are just for the big guys, right? The Googles, the Microsofts, the companies with more money than cents. Well, I hate to break it to you, but that's about as accurate as a weather forecast from a drunk pigeon. Because here's the thing, cyber criminals are like toddlers in a ball pit. They don't discriminate. They'll happily go after anyone from multinational corporations to your grandma's knitting club, as long as there's even a whiff of vulnerability in the air. And frankly, most smaller businesses and individuals reek of it, like a week old tuna sandwich at a picnic. Think about it. When was the last time you updated your computer's security software? Probably not recently enough, or used a password that wasn't 123456 or, uh, God forbid, password. Yeah, exactly. You're practically begging to be a cybercrime statistic at this point. The truth is, cyber attacks are less about who you are and more about what you've got, namely data. And whether it's your customer's credit card information, your company's financial records, or just your embarrassing browser history, we've all been there. Trust me, there's someone out there who'd love to get their grubby little hands on it. Now, you might be thinking, OK, but surely those big companies with their fancy IT departments and their cybersecurity budgets larger than my mortgage, they're safe, right? Well, yes and no. While those big companies certainly have more resources to throw at the problem, they also make for much juicier targets. Think of it like this. Would you rather try to rob a heavily guarded bank vault or swipe a $20 bill from your little cousin's piggy bank. One might be more challenging, but the other is a hell of a lot easier and, let's be honest, less likely to land you in prison. That's why cyber criminals are increasingly setting their sights on smaller businesses and individuals. They know these targets often lack the resources, expertise, and frankly, the sheer paranoia to adequately protect themselves. It's like shooting fish in a barrel except the barrel is filled with your hopes, dreams, and probably your social security number. And the worst part, these attacks can be devastating. We're talking about businesses forced to shut down, people losing their life savings, and enough emotional trauma to make a therapist consider early retirement. So what's the takeaway here? Simple size doesn't matter, at least not when it comes to cybersecurity. Whether you're a multinational corporation or a one-person Etsy shop, you're a potential target. And the sooner you accept that, the sooner you can start taking steps to protect yourself. Remember, cyber criminals are like those annoying telemarketers who call during dinner. Relentless, persistent and seemingly impossible to get rid of. But unlike telemarketers, you can't just hang up on these guys. You need to be prepared. So stay tuned because in the next few chapters, we'll be debunking even more cybersecurity myths and giving you the tools you need to fight back against these digital delinquents. All right, let's talk passwords, those digital gatekeepers that stand between your precious data and the hordes of internet goblins who want to steal it. You know the drill? Make it long, make it strong, sprinkle in some random characters, and for God's sake, don't use your pet's name followed by your birthday. We've all heard it a million times before, but here's the thing. While strong passwords are undoubtedly important, 
They're about as effective at guaranteeing your online safety as a screen door on a submarine. Sure, they might keep the casual snooper out, but for the determined attacker, they're nothing more than a minor inconvenience. Because let's be honest, in today's digital landscape, relying solely on passwords for security is like trying to contain a wildfire with a garden hose. It's simply not enough. You see, the problem is that cyber criminals are crafty little buggers. They're not just sitting around trying to brute force their way through your password anymore. Though, let's be honest, some of you are making it remarkably easy for them. No, they've upped their game. They're using sophisticated techniques like phishing, where they trick you into handing over your precious login credentials willingly. You know, like that email from Amazon telling you that your account has been compromised and you need to click on this totally not suspicious link to update your payment information. Or that text message from your bank asking for your PIN because their system is down. And before you get all smug and say, oh, I'd never fall for something like that, remember? These phishing attempts are getting increasingly sophisticated. We're not talking about poorly written emails from Nigerian princes anymore. These are well-crafted messages designed to exploit your trust, your fear, and your general inability to resist clicking on shiny things. So if strong passwords aren't enough, what's the solution? Well, my friends, it's time to introduce you to the unsung hero of the cybersecurity world, multi-factor authentication or MFA for those in the know. Now I know what you're thinking, uh, another acronym. Can't I just go back to mindlessly clicking on things and hoping for the best? And look, I get it, MFA can be a bit of a pain. It's that extra step, that additional layer of security that requires you to you know, actually put in a little bit of effort, but trust me, it's worth it. Think of MFA like the annoying but ultimately life-saving friend who insists on taking your keys away when you've had one too many margaritas. Sure, they might be a bit of a buzzkill in the moment, but they're also preventing you from making a potentially catastrophic mistake. Ah, the blissful ignorance of assuming you'll know immediately if you've been hacked. It's almost adorable, like a baby deer thinking it can outsmart a pack of wolves wearing tuxedo vests. Because here's the thing, folks. Cyber attacks aren't always a brick through a window. It's often more like termites, slowly and silently causing damage. You don't even know they're there, slowly chewing away at the foundation of your digital life, until one day, Boom, your entire online banking history is being auctioned off on the dark web for the price of a slightly used Camry. And let's be clear, we're not talking about some theoretical future threat here. This is happening right now to people like you and me every single day. People who think they're being careful because they change their Netflix password every three months. Meanwhile, some hacker in their mother's basement is having a field day with their credit card info, probably ordering enough pineapple on pizza to make even the devil say, all right, that's a bit much. The truth is many cyber attacks are designed to go undetected for as long as possible. Hackers are like the world's most unwelcome house guests. They want to stay as long as possible, quietly rifling through your digital drawers before making off with your valuables. And by the time you realize they've been there, they're long gone, sipping Mai Tais on a beach somewhere purchased with your stolen frequent flyer miles. Remember those floppy disks your parents used to have? The ones they swore were filled with important documents, but actually contained nothing but a single pixelated image of a dog wearing sunglasses. Well, back then, antivirus software was like the cool kid in school. It strutted around, confidently stopping those early computer viruses in their tracks. It was basically the digital equivalent of a hall monitor who actually got things done. But just like those floppy disks became about as useful as a screen door on a submarine, so too did antivirus software start to lose its luster. And that, my friends, is because the internet decided to evolve faster than a Pikachu in a thunderstorm. You see, cyber threats got smarter. They started using these things called zero-day exploits, which are basically like the cyber equivalent of a surprise school play where everyone forgets their lines except for that one kid who's weirdly good at improv. 
Antivirus software still clinging to its old playbook basically stands there with its pants down, completely caught off guard. And it's not like these threats announce themselves with a giant neon sign saying, Hey, I'm here to steal your data. They're sneaky, like a raccoon trying to steal your sandwich at a picnic. You wouldn't even know your data was gone until you tried to show everyone that embarrassing childhood picture you keep for some reason. So, what's the solution? Well, we need to up our game, folks. We need to bring in the big guns. I'm talking about endpoint detection and response tools, or EDR for those of you who like to sound fancy at dinner parties. These tools are like the cybersecurity equivalent of having a bodyguard who can actually predict the future. They don't just wait for bad things to happen. They actively monitor your systems looking for any suspicious activity. Think of them as the Sherlock Holmes of cybersecurity, except instead of a deer stalker hat, they have algorithms, and instead of a pipe, they have, well, more algorithms. The point is, they're cool, okay? Now, let's talk about the government's role in all of this. Because uh, let's face it, when it comes to cybersecurity, a lot of us look to them like that one friend we always ask for help moving, even though they always complain about their back afterward. We kind of expect them to swoop in and save the day, right? And don't get me wrong, the government does play a critical role. They're the ones setting the rules of the road, making sure everyone's playing fair in this wild west of the internet. Here's the thing, cybersecurity isn't a one-man show, it's more like a bizarre, slightly dysfunctional community theatre production where everyone's been given the wrong script, but somehow the show must go on. And we're all in this production together, folks, the government, businesses and individuals like you and me. We all have a part to play in keeping our data safe. It's like brushing your teeth. The government can provide you with a toothbrush and toothpaste, maybe even floss if you're lucky, but they can't actually brush your teeth for you. And who knows? Maybe with folks like Kamala Harris potentially stepping onto the political stage, we might see some interesting developments in the cybersecurity landscape. She's been known to champion public-private partnerships, which is basically a fancy way of saying, hey, government and businesses, how about we actually work together on this whole cybersecurity thing? And frankly, that's not a bad idea. It's like when you were a kid and your parents made you share your toys with your sibling, even though you really didn't want to. Sometimes sharing is caring, even when it comes to cybersecurity. So, what have we learned today? Well, besides the fact that comparing cybersecurity to a community theatre production is a surprisingly apt analogy, we've learned that cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility. It's not enough to just rely on outdated antivirus software or hope the government will magically solve all our problems. We need to be proactive folks. We need to educate ourselves about the latest threats, use strong passwords, and for goodness sake, don't write them down on a sticky note attached to your monitor. And maybe, just maybe, consider investing in some of those fancy EDR tools we talked about. And most importantly, remember this, cybersecurity isn't a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process, like flossing or trying to understand the appeal of reality TV. But unlike those things, it's actually important. So stay vigilant, stay informed, and for the love of all that is good and holy, please stop clicking on suspicious links. Thanks for watching.